Good evening. I'm spot on weather meteorologist Matthew Euler, and we're going to talk about another. I'm going to do a new spot on weather lesson, and this one's titled "Clouds: Language of the Sky." This is one of my favorite topics. Um, as a weather observer earlier on in my career, I tell you what, I've learned a lot over over time about weather, and you can too by simply just watching the clouds and how they change, the type, and there's a general cyclical pattern to the clouds which will tell you what kind of weather will be moving into your area. And it's it, and anybody can do this if you can learn to read the sky. Um, I know there's cloud charts out there which are really interesting, um, but if you can read the sky and watch how clouds change over time, you too can become a meteorologist or a forecaster and become fairly accurate at it. So let's start it off with what is a cloud? So the definition, and this is courtesy of the source is the American Meteorological Society. Um, a cloud is a visible aggregate of minute water droplets and or ice particles, okay, in the atmosphere above the Earth's surface. And the identification of clouds is critical in being able to forecast the weather as a certain cloud sequence typically occurs in a repetitive or cyclical manner in certain situations. And, and clouds portend what is to come along with the wind direction and barometric pressure tendency. All right. And so you'll see a lot of cloud charts out there which will have a picture of certain clouds. Okay. And... It will also have a uh, wind direction and barometric pressure tendency relationship along with the cloud type. Um, so, for example, let's say we have a middle level cloud moving in, an alto stratus cloud, and the winds are from the southeast or from the south, and the barometric pressure is falling, then that generally means that a storm system is approaching your area. So let's get right into it. Um, before I start showing you the different cloud types, um, as far as pictures go and their characteristics, let's talk about the different cloud types here, just a general overview. We're going to start with high clouds. And the high clouds are the cirrus clouds, cirrostratus, and cirrocumulus. And high clouds are made up entirely of ice crystals in the upper atmosphere where temperatures are always well below freezing. And high clouds generally form at altitudes above 23,000 feet. Now that's in the mid-latitudes where we live. Um, in the polar regions, those altitudes are lower. And in the tropical regions, those heights can be much higher because the atmosphere is warmer in the tropics. All right, middle clouds, those are, those are mainly your alto stratus, alto cumulus. And nimbostratus, this one is a special case because nimbostratus starts out as a middle-level cloud uh, usually before lowering, um, and it lowers mainly due to continuous rain or snow coming out of its cloud base. So mid clouds are made up of a mixture of ice crystals and water droplets, and they occur between 6,500, 6,500, and 23,000 feet here in the mid latitudes. Low clouds, those are nimbostratus. Again, that's that special case cloud, nimbostratus again. Okay. So nimbostratus start out in the mid-cloud level between 6,500 and 23,000 feet, but as they precipitate out rain or snow, they lower to less, the base lowers to less than 6,500 feet. So nimbostratus, again, is a very special case. Also, low clouds are composed of cumulus cloud types, stratus, and stratocumulus. And low clouds are made up of water droplets, and they, again, occur below 6,500 feet. And then we have a special category, which are vertical clouds. And that is mainly the cumulonimbus. I know it's a very tough one to say. It's a tough word, okay? Cumulo in Latin means heap or growing tower. And nimbus means rain producing. So cumulonimbus, that one is usually the star of all clouds because it's your thunderstorm cloud. Range, in the vertical clouds, the cumulonimbus can range from the lower cloud height and go all the way up to the high cloud height. Well, 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 sometimes as high as 60,000, 70,000 feet. 
So let's start off with the cirrus clouds. Cirrus clouds, here's a great picture of it. They're detached clouds in the form of white, delicate filaments, and they're mostly white patches or narrow bands, and they're very fibrous or hair-like and or silky sheen appearance. And when most people characterize cirrus clouds by mare's tails because they resemble horse hair, they make for bright yellow or red beautiful sunrises and sunsets, and if anybody's had a chance to go down to Key West, Florida, uh, you will know what I mean. I, I have not had that luxury, but I know a lot of people that have enjoyed beautiful sunsets down there over my, um, my life. And cirrus clouds may be the first sign of an approaching storm system. Moving on to cirrostratus clouds, this is what they look like. Now I want you to notice how the um, sun appears to basically be transparent, that sun, that sheet of cirrostratus sometimes will block the sun out, but the light is still allowed to penetrate through this cirrostratus cloud deck. So cirrostratus clouds are transparent whitish veil clouds with a fibrous hair-like or smooth appearance, and a sheet of cirrostratus, which is very extensive, they nearly always end by covering the whole sky. And another interesting thing about cirrostratus is they produce a halo around the sun or moon due to the refraction of light, bending of light through six-sided ice crystals. Remember, high clouds are made up of ice crystals. So when light moves and, and, and it interacts with these six-sided ice crystals, you get a large ring known as a halo around the sun or moon. And the old weather proverb is, halo around the sun or moon, rain or snow soon. Cirrocumulus clouds, these are thin white patches, or sheets, or layered clouds without shading. And they're composed of very small elements in the form of more or less regularly arranged grains or ripples. And cirrocumulus clouds are typically known as mackerel sky because they resemble the appearance of fish scales. You know, if you had a fish laying on its side, you see the scale nature to these. Those are cirrocumulus clouds, the mackerel sky. Moving now to the mid-level clouds, we have, we'll start with altostratus. And for altostratus, you notice how the sun appears dimmer. The sun is dimmer through an altostratus cloud deck because it's thicker and it's lower. Um, so altostratus clouds are gray or bluish cloud sheets or layers of striated or fibrous clouds that totally or partially covers the sky. And they're thin enough to regularly reveal the sun as if seen through the ground glass effect. They do not produce a halo, nor shadows of objects on the ground. So there's your difference. If you see a halo around the sun or moon, cirrostratus is the cloud type. Whereas if you do not see a halo around the, around the sun or moon, and you're also um, not able to see your shadow on the ground, then you know it's altostratus clouds. Altocumulus clouds. These are, you know how they're patchy here? You notice how it's patchy like sheep wool, right? They're white and or a gray patch, sheet or layered clouds, generally composed of laminae, which are plates, rounded masses or rolls. They may be partly fibrous or diffuse, and when the edge of a thin, when the edge or a thin semi-transparent patch of altocumulus cloud passes in front of the sun or moon, you get those colored rings that are known as coronas. And so a colored, a corona basically is a colored ring with red on the outside, and blue on the inside occurring within a few degrees of the sun or moon. And by the way, altocumulus clouds, those are the most common mid-cloud type. Nimbostratus clouds, this is your rain or snow making cloud, continuous rain or snow. They occur as a result of thickening altostratus clouds. A dark, it's a dark gray cloud layer diffused by falling rain or snow. And you can see in this picture how the base is diffuse it's really dark because rain is falling from this nimbostratus cloud layers. They are thick enough to block out the sun, and the cloud base will lower from the middle to the lower cloud heights or levels as precipitation continues. The cloud lowers, the base lowers. Low ragged clouds, they typically occur beneath this cloud. So you'll see low ragged clouds beneath the nimbostratus, which sometimes merges with its base. Cumulus clouds, these are just puffy, cottony clouds. You see them a lot during the summertime, um, and, and they just resemble the cotton balls, and, and you'll see these little blue areas where the air is sinking, these clear areas between them. But cumulus clouds are a lower cloud. They typically occur um, 
usually 3,000 feet and below is where you'll see cumulus. 3,000 to about 1,500 feet above the ground. Stratus clouds, these are generally a low gray cloud with a uniform base which may, if thick enough, produce drizzle, ice prisms, or snow grains. Now with stat stratus crowd, uh, clouds, notice how dull gray and solid this overcast is. These, these clouds are responsible for your gray, dreary days where you just you know, you're not very motivated to go do anything. You just kind of want to lay in bed all day. Um, now, stratus cloud, fog is a stratus cloud when on the Earth's surface. And with the stratus clouds, since they're so layer-like, um, you know, this is how, how layered this is. That's because there's very little up and down or vertical motion in the cloud. Most of the motion is horizontal, side to side. Stratocumulus clouds. These are gray or whitish patch sheet or layer clouds, which almost always has a dark honeycomb appearance. Rounded masses or rolls. They're non-fibrous and may or may not be merged. And they have regularly arranged small elements with an apparent width of more than five degrees. So if you were to put your three fingers up at arm's length, that's generally how the elements, how wide the elements are for stratocumulus clouds. Strato literally means layer-like and cumulus means heap. Okay, and so these clouds occur a lot during the winter time when you get very cold air moving over a warmer surface, for example. And this is the star of all clouds, a cumulonimbus cloud. Okay, this is your thunderstorm cloud, and look how impressive this thunderstorm cloud is. Uh, as the air rise, rises vertically up to 60,000 feet, uh, eventually the temperatures in the upper atmosphere will be warmer, and it will cause a flattening shape into the anvil pattern you see here. And uh, it, it's really impressive. These clouds can rise all the way up to 60 to 70,000 feet above the ground. It's a heavy and dense cloud in the form of a mountain or a huge tower. And the upper portion is usually smoother, fibrous or striated, and nearly always flattened in the shape of an anvil or a vast plume. And under the base of this cloud, which is often very dark, there are often ragged low scud clouds that may or may not merge with the base. And cumulonimbus clouds, if you live on the southern Great Plains or in the Tornado Alley, these are the clouds that can produce supercell thunderstorms and tornadoes in hail. All right, and I just wanted to end this lesson by just summing up, basically showing you, you know, here's your cirrus, cirrostratus with the halo around the sun or moon, cirrocumulus, your macro sky, so notice how those are above 23,000 feet. Your alto cumulus clouds, um, and then also the alto stratus clouds are in mid-level clouds. And the nimbo stratus can also extend up in, into the mid-cloud level. And then for the lower clouds, nimbo stratus, stratus, stratocumulus, and then cumulus. And then notice the cumulonimbus can go all the way from near the Earth's surface, 1,000 feet above ground level, all the way up and well above the high cloud level. 60 to 70,000 feet. So again, clouds are very important. If you take the time to really sit there and you're a patient observer, uh, you will eventually see a pattern of the clouds and the type of weather that you get. All right, that wraps up the lesson on clouds for this evening. I hope everyone has a great night and feel free to hit us up on comments on any kind of training topic or any questions you have weather related, we'll try to answer those for you. All right, everybody have a great night, spot on weather. If we're not spot on, we're not doing it right. Have a great evening, evening everyone.